Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna, and this is a podcast about knitting and a little sewing and other crafty things that I get up to. Today is Monday, November 26, 2018. I'm coming to you from the Manassas area in Virginia, in the U.S., and um, let's go ahead and get started. I have some finished objects, well, not many, Um, not much working on in progress either. Um, We do have our children's literature book today. Um, I have Etsy shop update um, and some uh, prizes to give away for some of our make-alongs. So let's go ahead and get started with those few little finished um, objects that I have. To begin with, um, through the month of October, I did Vlogtober, where I did a variety of different crafts. And two of the crafts that I showed were incomplete um, at the time, um, at the end of October. I did the, and showed how to do the um, main part of it, but then I didn't actually finish the object for myself. So I wanted to do that right away. So that was the uh, first thing that I was working on um, in November. And to begin, it is my pumpkin pillow. And what I showed was how I pieced together the, um, the pumpkin itself. And then I did just some really simple stitch in the ditch stitching here. And somebody got something on my pillow here. Um, it's been sitting downstairs. And um, on the back, I put a zipper and I didn't do it the way I usually do. And I'm sorry for that. I did not have a regular small zipper, which I would have preferred. On my nail there. Um, Always breaking my nails. And um, all I had was the big zipper. So what I find is this is noisy. It it makes a lot of noise. What I typically do is um, what you call a lapped application where you can't see the zipper at all. And I use that smaller size zipper and I prefer that. Um, I don't know why I did it this way. I know why I used that zipper. I did not have a smaller orange one, but I don't know why I decided to um, install it that way. So next time I will go back to the lapped application. So that was my pumpkin pillow. And um, the next thing was also a quilting project, and that was my uh, leaf table runner. So this is the maple leaf pattern, and I made three squares. And then I um, put them together with the strips of this fabric, which was my favorite fabric from the set. And then this is actually my favorite, what I put on the back. So it was a really interesting panel that they had because it's darker at the bottom and then it gets lighter towards the top. So I thought that was really interesting. So really, um, I could I could put it on the table um, either way. And I have been wanting to make a variety of table runners for my coffee table in my family room, which is a rather small rectangle, because my grandson's always playing at that table. He throws books and to- toys and food, all kinds of stuff there. And just to help protect the wood a little bit, um, I like to keep a table runner on there, and I thought it'd be nice to have one um, to switch out. I, I do have three, but just to switch out more frequently. So um, this is um, for that coffee table, and we had it on until uh, I pulled it off today to come and show. So those were the two things that I hadn't quite finished during Vlogtober, and they're done. So I have not been up to very much knitting because in the month of October, I did 31 vlogs which involved a lot of crafts. So I was literally the entire month letting lots of little things around my house fall apart, um, just not be kept up normally. My craft spaces, this is my craft room or so-called sewing room. Um, This was a disaster. I have space in the basement, a disaster. I was using the island in the kitchen and um, I needed a lot of pick up and straighten up and um, so I spent a lot of time doing that, um, which has gotten messy again in the meantime, but um, I, I, did, I do have to get it cleaned up because I really don't. While I'm working, I'm a very messy crafter, and I've always been that way, and then at the end, I clean everything up. But I literally just kind of throw stuff here and there, and um, it's a feature of my impatience. So, um, 
things get messed up in my craft spaces and have to be cleaned up a lot. And that month was so busy that very little of what just wasn't absolutely necessary got done. In addition, I worked eight days that month, which is very out of the ordinary. So um, at the end of October and the Vlogtober, which I just thoroughly enjoyed, I was exhausted. And um, I found that because I was doing so many other crafts that I enjoy, I love paper crafts, I love sewing of any kind, but I was doing all these different things which I was loving. And so my knitting stalled. And you know, for me, objects at rest tend to stay at rest and objects in motion tend to stay in motion. And my knitting rested and I've had a hard time getting back to it. The pair of socks that I would have shown you the last time I got down to the point of putting the toe in the first sock and I haven't touched them in over a month. So that's pretty unheard of, but I, I don't feel like I should force myself to do it. Um, that's one reason I haven't been back to podcast because I haven't had much knitting to show you, but I have a few little things now that I, I you know, it's not that I don't want to knit. I do. I just, um, kind of stalled there and I, I had trouble, you know, getting excited about knitting again. But I'll tell you some, um, one of the things that excited me was I've had a skein of yarn um, that's been um, since I went to SSK. I purchased it there and I'll show you the color. Okay. I don't think it's showing very true. The shine on there is uh, keeping it. It's a little, it's it's a mauve, almost, I, I guess, uh, with some pink in it. This is from Queen City Yarn. There it is. And the color is called Lost Princess. And it is a DK weight. It is 100% superwash merino, approximately 250 yards in the skein. And so that was Queen City. And what I'd wanted to make was a hat. Well, what, when I, when I purchased it, that was my idea, was I was gonna make a hat. Because from their stand, I also purchased this gorgeous white pom-pom. So I wanted this for a hat. I just thought, oh, the colors will be so great. But you know, it went up here and um, I just didn't notice it all the time. And then one day, um, package was in the mailbox and my husband went to get the mail and said what have you ordered now because I really at that moment didn't have anything I could remember you know every once in a while I just forget what I've ordered but I couldn't I wasn't expecting anything that I could remember so I'm thinking what did I order what did I order he goes well it's coming from the UK and I thought oh then that could what did I order that you know because I'm usually looking for stuff like that well, it was a surprise package. And this came from Allie, who is on Instagram, Starry Eyes Allie. And she has a wonderful podcast about knitting and crochet um, called Little Drops of Wonderful. And uh, a while back, I had sent her a project bag and she surprised me with a package. I It was so out of the blue and it just so touched my heart. And... Um, in particular, because if you watch your podcast and if you don't, you should check over and do that. I'm going to put a link below. Everything will be linked right below the video here, that little um, upside down gray triangle. If you will just push on that, I'll give you a link to Allie's podcast. But she makes these project bags and she calls them dodgy bags because she thinks they're not, you know, just uh, perfect. And, um, secretly have always wanted one but I know she doesn't make them to sell she just sort of makes them and you know gives them as gifts and uses them herself and so um, you know I never wanted to broach her with well would you like to do a swap because I just thought that's not the way she um, you know operates and besides I'm just nervous about things like that I was so thrilled because inside this wonderful package was one of her dodgy bags now you cannot, by any stretch, call this a dodgy bag. It's a beautiful bag. Look at this fabric. That is the most gorgeous print in absolutely gorgeous colors. And this reminded me of the yarn instantly. And I thought, because there's a bigger one on the other side. That was the side I was looking at. I'm hiding something from you there. 
I thought, oh, I'm going to put that hat in here. And it kind of brought back my desire to start something new. I sometimes don't like to start things when I've got something sitting there that needs to be done. Um, I don't always want to start something new, but I did. I thought this will help me. And it did. It did. Um, she included on the bag and some other things in the bag two pins and this is her brand new pin and it says you are a little drop of wonderful and she designed that herself and she's talking about um, setting up an Etsy shop where maybe she can sell them um, which will help her podcast to be able to pay some of the shipping charges because you know prices that you ship that can get a little expensive. So she's hoping maybe that will work. Well, I would certainly buy them. Um, but I was so touched to receive one. And she said, please don't say anything yet because um, I want to announce it first on my podcast. Well, she finally did that last week. So I was, I thought, okay, now I can really um, show that. But there's another little pin on there. Do you see that one? And it says, member of the Dodgy Bag Club. And I can't read it with these glasses but I think it's a member of dodgy bag club on the side there's a little hanger here with adorable Christmas tree project um, keeper and I think that looks like a little drop of wonderful too on a stitch marker and she sent along a gorgeous set of fat quarters look at these and it got me excited to make some more Christmas coasters or my Christmas um, table topper. And then there are two beautiful yellow prints and these are gorgeous and so remind me of Allie because she loves yellow. So thank you again, Allie. You know how much I loved everything that came in this beautiful, not dodgy, dodgy bag. So in there, I put that yarn and a hat pattern. Let me open that again. I left the pattern inside there. So the name of the hat that I decided to do, and this is a pay-for pattern that I got on Ravelry. You see it in red. This is called the Juncture Hat, and it's by Julie Hart Designs. So I'll give you a close-up there. Um, the design is done with cabling. It's just um, two stitch cables, so you're just um, taking one to the back or to the front and then, you know, knitting and purling the other um, stitch. So, um, I had I never do a gauge swatch, and um, I usually use worsted weight, and this was DK, but when you looked at that DK, it was so, it seems so much like um, the Cascade yarns, Cascade 220 superwash yarns it and I seem to be getting the, that gauge so I thought I'm gonna go with the hundred stitches um, for the cast on and um, because that's what I usually do with the cascade for, for making a, a hat and this has come out too small um, it looks good stretched and and it does fit but um, I I still had a lot of, I have, I showed you the remainder of the skein. I still have a lot of yarn left over, so I've already cast it on again, and I'm going to remake the hat. I did not make the ribbing as long, because typically I don't like it as long, but I think I'm going to make it um, the, the length that she suggested, and um, perhaps do an extra repeat, because I really want to put that pom-pom on it, and I think it'll look better if it's slightly slouchy, so I'll, I'll do an extra repeat of the pattern. But um, this is the, um, can't remember the name, Juncture Hat. And um, it, I do like the way that it turned out in this yarn. I think it um, made a nice um, stitch definition and um, it's very soft and squishy. So all around happy, it's just a little small and I have someone that it will fit. So um, all is well. Um, of course, I should have swatched, but you know, it's real, even when I have, I thought, okay, I'm going to do my gauge swatch now that the hat's done. It's really hard for me to count that when you've got this busy pattern. So I don't, I, I can do it if it's knit or purl or garter stitch or something, but um, that's hard for me. So what can I say? But that is a finished object. I also finished another hat. Um, my daughter's friend had asked me if I would make him a hat and he wanted uh, black and he wanted it 
perfectly plain, just uh, like a skull cap almost. So I didn't use a pattern. I just, and I, I probably wrote down how many stitches I cast on. I don't remember right now when I initially did the um, brim. I had my husband try it on and he said, oh, that's too loose. I wouldn't like it like that. I, w I like mine tighter around my ears. So I started over which is so much fun with the one by one twisted rib. Um, my least favorite part of, of doing it, I had to do all over again. So I, I ripped that out and cast on fewer stitches and uh, it turned out to fit perfectly. I'm gonna put a picture right here of him wearing it to the Virginia Tech, Virginia UVA, UVA game. That was this past Saturday, which was freezing cold at, in Blacksburg and um, pretty rainy day. So he said his head was warm, a success then. So that's a finished object. Now my other finished objects are very, very small. I am making um, a couple of advent boxes to send um, one to my sister and her husband and the other to a good friend. And inside the boxes, um, I don't wanna say everything that's in there. In, in the two, and they don't both, they don't have the same things in them for the most part. Um, but I did make, decide I was gonna knit some ornaments. So let me grab the very first one is a little sweater. And it's from this pattern called Holiday Sweater Ornament by Amy Munson. And she shows hers with um, some, this is stitched on afterwards, almost just like embroidering on the sweater, but I didn't want to do that. I don't like embroidering on knit fabric, um, unless it's just duplicate stitch. So um, I thought just the plain sweater was fine. So this is leftover yarn that I had, um, that and I made a pair of socks from last year as Christmas socks. So this is the little sweater and I think I have about enough to make another one. And if not, I have some green still left so I could do a striped one and I would for sure have enough. So I'm gonna make another one of these. Um, so that's a finished object, but not much of a finished object. Um, oh, you know, I totally forgot to tell you what yarn did I use for that hat and I, have the tag here, but I don't, oh, here it is. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, it's the, this is Cascade yarn. It is the um, 220, Cascade 220, but it's not the super wash one. So this is the one that comes in a skein instead of in that ball that they do. And it is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, yes. And it's not the super wash. So it's um, 100 grams, 220 yards. So that's why they call it the 220. Um, so it's um, worsted, but I feel for some reason that this is a little bit heavier than the Superwash one, just a little bit plumper feeling. But this is the, the yarn that I used for his hat. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that a minute ago. Okay, so I also, with the ornaments, um, if you watched my Vlogtober, you will ha have seen the little acorns that I made from the hoard pattern. And um, I didn't bring that pattern over with me. This is by Hunter Hammerson. And I made a little dish of fall colored acorns. And then I decided I'll do a red one and a green one. And um, I have a lot of acorn caps still that I collected. And I drilled holes through a, a pair that were um, connected at the top naturally and put a hole through each and ran a, a cord through it and then put the acorns on. So I'll put a picture here of that. And then I also um, made a little sock and um, hold on, I'm gonna go get those patterns so I can show you. I think I left the pattern downstairs. So the pattern that I used for the mittens is called a mini mitten pattern. It looks like this. It's um, available on Ravelry, it's free. Kathy Lewinsky is the designer and you can see here uh, comparison size. And she, when you go to Ravelry, and type in mini mitten. You're gonna get a lot of patterns. So you look for uh, this one. And then when you go to the page, you'll see some information there. But the click, when you click the link for the free pattern, it takes you to her blog, which is called Just Crafty Enough. And what she was doing whenever she did this was making things to put in an advent calendar. And so she shows here, this was her fourth day so she has an advent calendar with these little 
pockets and um, I bet everyone has a little ornament in it to put on the tree, which is a really fun idea. That's why I wanted to show you the pattern in case you'd like to copy that idea. So I did not put the um, color work on mine, but here's a picture. And here is the pattern I was talking about, Hoard, which is the um, Hunter Hammerson pattern for making the little acorns. Um, I just did mine in uh, the Christmas colors uh, for this set. And um, I think that's all I have that's a finished project. Um, I do have something else I'm working on I'll talk about a little bit later, and that has kept me extremely busy. Um, so I don't really have a, a work in progress other than that second version of the hat that I was uh, that I told you about making. Um, let's see. So what do we have? We have a book. So let's talk about the book next. Our book today is called The Magic Ball of Wool by Susanna Isern and Nora Hill. And this is a charming story about a ball of wool that mysteriously appears um, on the hedgehog's back one morning. And the first one to spy this ball of wool is um, the hedgehog's friend, the spider, who suggests that uh, she will help him learn to knit. And so the spider, being an expert at knitting, sits down and teaches the hedgehog how to knit. And as he knits, friends come to visit and each one um, asks for something. Um, a pair of mittens, a centipede, a hundred socks. Oh boy. But as each thing is given to the forest friend, it magically turns into something else, which was what the person truly wanted. Um, the little uh, centipedes socks turn into castanets. Um, the bear is knit a baklava, but it turns into a seashell. So everything magically, the magic ball of wool, turns into something else. But at the, near the end, a crab comes along and tells the um, hedgehog he really needs to have her knit him a strong rope because there's a whale that's been beached and they need the rope to help pull it out. But the hedgehog discovers there's only a tiny, tiny bit of yarn left and um, is very upset that she can do nothing with this tiny piece of yarn. So all the other forest friends are upset by this too and they return all of the gifts they were given. And in the morning they've turned back into yarn and the hedgehog um, puts it all back, unravels everything, puts it back together, uh, attaches the string and starts to knit a rope, which is, I, I won't tell you the very end of it, but uh, there's not too much more. Um, I really think this is a sweet story. It's very, um, it's it's very entertaining, and I think young children around um, kindergarten, first, second, um, third grade would enjoy hearing that story as a read aloud. So that is our fiber-related children's literature book for today. I have a number of make-alongs to um, give prizes for, and so uh, we're going to take a few minutes here and let me go through all that. I'll be looking down here at my book. Um, so we can see which ones they are. First, I'll just mention the mitten along. That uh, will we have several pairs of finished mittens um, over in the Ravelry group, and that will be going until um, the first time I podcast in January. So uh, nothing to be pulled today for that. But we did have a uh, baby objects thread, and we had a lot of entries, 186. And I did say that um, I, it, it was the price was not mentioned um, in the thread, but it did say that uh, one price for every 50 um, entries. And so um, I've decided what I'm going to do is um, gift each winner a pattern from Ravelry uh, up to a value of $10. So if you are a winner, please go into Ravelry and find a pattern that is giftable. They are not all, but I think many, I, I don't know if I should say most, but many are giftable. So if you'll find a pattern up to $10 USD, um, I will gift that pattern to you. If you'll respond in the Ravelry thread and tell me in the subject line that you are a winner so that I can find that quickly. So our first winner is number 171, um, and that is E. Spencer in NC, and um, so please um, send me a private message in Ravelry. And number 24, Ginger Bedell 
if you will do the same. Number 36, Acorn Knitster. 153, Rena Gale. And 119, Jasmine Davia or Davila, uh, one. If you five will send me that private message on Ravelry, I will gift you a pattern from Ravelry. Okay, and then we still have the oldies thread. That is ongoing. That's for using old patterns or old yarn or fabric and getting something finished up that you had planned to make a long time ago. And that will be um, ending in January again. Now our sock knit along is a year long and um, so I'm going to be pulling today, or I, I have, um, our beginning number is 1,178 and um, the last entry in there when I uh, looked this morning was 1,333 and so our winner is number 192, I'm, I'm sorry, 1292, 1292 um, and that is Holly Isaac. And there might have been a number at the end of that. So if you're Holly Isaac of any sort and you entered this, um, that's you. I was thinking there was a number, but I didn't write it down. So that is our sock along. And I've got the prize over here. Pause here. For the sock winner, um, Holly Isaac, I have um, two 50-gram skeins of this Regia Design Line Arnie Carlos yarn for a self-striping pair of socks in a kind of purples and greens and blues and some white. So if you'll send me a private message on Ravelry and um, tell me that you are the sock winner and then also provide me with your full um, name and mailing address so that I can get this mailed out to you. And I have to go to the post office this week so uh, I would definitely get it out this week if I hear from you in time. And then we have the shawl along um, and we had kept that going um, I'd already done, there'd already been a winner, and then we said we just would keep it going and that the prize would be yarn to complete the banner unfurled shawl. And I will show you here a picture of me wearing it on uh, voting day in November 6th, uh, about 20 days ago here in the U.S. So that shawl, I will gift you the pattern for that shawl if you don't already have it. And also um, the yarn and enough beads to finish the shawl. It doesn't really take very many beads. And there were 209 entries, and uh, number 156 is Mick Mick Adams. So MC and then Mick Adams. You are the winner. So again, if you can send me a private message on, on Ravelry, tell me you're the shawl along winner and provide me with your full uh, name and mailing information, I will get that mailed to you. So let me just double check that I've gotten everything. We talked about the mitten along being in January, the oldies being in January, the baby winners have been announced for a pattern. Uh, the sock winner's been announced. And the shawl along winner announced. I think that's everything. And if I've forgotten something, feel free to send me a message on Ravelry or in the YouTube comments or an email at inapicklenitting at gmail.com. So, because I don't want to miss anything, but um, feeling a bit um, lost and out of it here, um, having been um, so long since I've been uh, talking to you. So uh, those are our uh, prizes. Now some information about the um, Etsy shop. I am going to be um, doing one final sale of uh, objects in the um, Etsy shop and then I'm going to uh, close that shop. It's, uh, it's something that's not really easy for me to keep up with and it, there's so many other things that I want to do that um, I really don't uh, plan to keep that going. And I suppose if I ever found something I wanted to put on, I could open it again. But um, I had made, when I did the drawstring bag tutorial, I'd made quite a few bags. And so I really don't have a purpose for these. Um, I can save them for prizes, um, but um, Again, that's something just kind of sitting around here. So I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and sell them. I'm going to do it on Saturday, December 1st. So today's Monday. That's this Saturday, coming Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will activate um, everything that I have in there. Now, I have some things to show you. I also have two bags that have been cut out a long time ago. And never put together if I get time to do that I will be adding those as well just to get everything at once the um, ones I'm going to show you though are uh, drawstring bags they're small they're about a sock size 
So there's this one that is um, in these little um, pansies, and it has a, a handle. It has a ribbon cord and um, should have a pocket inside. Yeah, a little pocket, a little patch pocket inside. Okay, they do sit up by themselves. The next one is um, this pink and green one that has um, an attached handle, as did the uh, last one has an attached handle. It has this kind of cording for the drawstring, excuse me there, and a little patch pocket inside. The next one has a detachable handle and is this B fabric. And this is hard to see. There, maybe that'll get a little bit better. And it has um, honeycomb lining and a little patch pocket. I have this one that has a detachable handle. Patch pocket, it's a uh, light beige interior and it has a twill drawstring. I have this cupcake bag that has an attached handle and it has twill on the drawstring and patch pocket. Then I have this pink and gingham combination with a canvas bottom, a soft canvas, and a pocket. Now I have two cat bags. The, they have a different fabric at the top and I have not put the drawstring in the other one. I have all the stuff, I just haven't done it. Um, this one has gray, a detachable handle. So there's this Cats and Books, and the other side has these Cats and Books. I love that one. And then inside, it's a, hard to see, but cute little kitty on that pocket. Okay, so that's the um, kitty one. And then this one doesn't have a drawstring in it, but again, I have the drawstring, I just haven't put it in. And um, this looks a little different. Of course, it has a different color fabric at the top. And the cats are in different positions. But I think the same one on the inside. Yeah, I think I got that same part of the... It's probably that part right there that's on the pocket. It's a little hard to show. Okay, so two cat bags. I have this one that is taller. Um, this was when I was um, working up the pattern, just experimenting with different um, widths and heights and such. So this one, I like this height, um, it, but it is taller. It has a pretty bird there and this peach colored um, lining and a peach. Uh, this is a light canvas also. These all have um, batting inside of them. And then this one needs a, its drawstring as well. This is a patchwork um, coffee theme um, with this lining and black canvas at the bottom and a little patch pocket that's been also pieced inside and that one's a little bit taller too because it works out well with the squares that you're putting together and finally this one needs its drawstring is this chickens and roosters and um, I love this chicken wire that's uh, the contrast at and the handle, it's an attached handle. And inside is the same fabric to make a little pocket, but the lining are the little yellow chicks. So that's the chicken one. And then if uh, the two bags that I have cut out, one's a shark, a blue shark print, the other one is an Anne of Green Gables Christmas theme. And I don't remember if I cut those out as two zipper bags or three zipper bags, but what, however they're cut out, that's what they'll be. All the pieces are cut out. Everything's in a Ziploc bag together. I just um, never got around to sewing them. And I think I'd planned to do it before Christmas. And when Christmas came and went without them being done, just never got around to them. So I hope to do that this week. And if they're done by Saturday, they will also be in the Etsy shop. So again, that's Saturday, December 1st, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And there are all kinds of websites on the internet that will convert that time to your time. And um, not that it will happen again um, specifically, but in the past, the things that I've put in there have gone pretty quickly, like less than 30 minutes. And then I'll get emails from people saying, you know, oh, when are you going to put the stuff up? You know, I keep looking, blah, 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 because they looked later and it was all gone. Because when something's sold in there, then it just shows empty. That spot's just, however their system works, it just grabs that, that, that thing and it's gone. So um, if you are interested, you might just want to 
be right, if there's something in particular that you did want for sure, then you might just want to be there early so you can get it. So, um, let's see. I also wanted to talk to you about a swap that I did. And if you are a watcher of Craft House Magic, you will have seen Ellie um, showed what I sent her a long time ago because... Um, She's been podcasting all the time, and I just, um, it had not come when I podcast the last time. It came either that day or the next day, and I thought, oh, I could have shown this, and I, so I was disappointed, but you know how the mail is. It is what it is, and it was coming all the way from England, so um, we just have to be uh, patient with that. So I want to share with you the things that she made me, and I am indeed a lucky person, and um to have done a swap with such a lovely maker and um, just all the beautiful things she shared with me. Um, I'm going to put some pictures up and um, I have not used everything. I did put one, one, some yarn away. She had sent me some Jameson's yarn, um, tool skeins, and I was planning something with some Jameson and Smith's that I had. And I thought, I wonder if they're similar because they seemed it and um, I put and I put it away in the bag and forgot to take it out so otherwise I didn't put anything away because I was afraid um, gorgeous sock yarn now she tried said she tried to send me things that I wouldn't be as easy for me to get here which was delightful and this is a it's a sock yarn it makes a self-striped sock but I have never heard of this before. Ice yarns. And it feels great. It's 7525. It feels, you know, just like a great sock yarn. So can't wait to make some socks from that. Thank you, Ellie, for everything. And some West Yorkshire spinners in a beautiful, isn't that a gorgeous color combination? Just that if it doesn't show right, it's like aqua and periwinkle. Um, along with, you know, shades that uh, fit in with that. So another pair of self-striping yarn, uh, sock yarn will be coming. And then this just thrilled me to pieces because I wanted to immediately cast these on. It's just that it was October and I was so busy in uh, Vlogtober that I did not get around to even starting them, but I'm going to. This is her pumpkin patch sock set. Look at the beautiful dying the little speckles and it, it's just it's just perfect and then the green absolutely perfect and it would have been great to have had these knit up for vlogtober that would have been the crowning gem but um i just didn't have it in, in me to get any more socks done now she also sent me which i'm not going to open i'm going to open these um in december um until they run out maybe every other day open one these are little um um how was it put on a bits of wonderfulness? I don't know. Um, there was a comment made instead of calling them scraps and scrappy socks, it was a, another um, definition and that meant you know your leftover yarn, but it gave it some uh, more credit for what it is. They're they're bits of beautifulness. So, but I had not opened those intentionally because I thought that would be fun. Um, just to go ahead and do in December, so which I have a little plan for. Now, she also sent me some more lovely yarn. This yarn here is from Fondant Fiber. And um, I did once have a skein of Fondant Fiber, and it, it knit up so beautifully. These colors just have my name written all over them. Is that just so beautiful? Thank you so much. It's just gorgeous. And this yarn is Lay Family Yarns, and um, I was lucky enough to get some Lay Family yarn, yarn in my mouth, uh, Lay Family yarn um, once in the Bake Off colorway. And um, this is this colorway is called Kingfisher, and look at those gorgeous colors, just exactly the colors of a Kingfisher bird. And there are some little minis here. I, do, I don't want to keep you with um, every, but I do need to show you. This is Sylvan Tiger yarn in the hydrangea color. And um, hydrangeas mean a lot to me. So this color is, I, I want to put that into something very special. And this is West Green Loft yarns, a sock yarn. Look at that. Does that, that just looks like spring to me, like beautiful spring flower. It's called 
I can't, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce it. A-N-Y-A-L-U-L-U. Anyalulu? Maybe that's someone's name. Can you read that? It's just beautiful. And then she also included, which I've kept everything in this bag, uh, some candy goodies. And that's um, absolutely long gone because um, if you haven't heard before, you know, Mr. Pickle is a, a candy holic. So as soon as he saw that, I said, oh, get, there was an orange, those oranges that are chocolate and orange in the segments. And I said, well, okay, you can have one. And um, the next thing I looked, it was gone. I got one. She does bobbin lace and made two bookmarks out of her bobbin lace. I feel very honored to have these. Uh, I, 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 can't, I can't even express it. They are beautiful and that is such an amazing craft. She sent along one of her Craft House Magic pins. So now I'm definitely gonna have to take, I have a little thing of pins up here and now that I have um, from Allie and from um, Ellie, Allie and Ellie, some pins, I'm gonna have to um, put them on a bag, which I have yet to do. She also sent this pretty little triangle which she made and it has a button on the top and inside a little place for your tapestry needle which is something that um, I've been using tapestry needle quite a bit on something I'll talk about later the little bulb stitch markers and a gorgeous pair of rose gold stork scissors uh, she sells these in her Etsy shop. Well, it's not an Etsy shop anymore. She used to have an Etsy shop. Now she just has her own shop. So um, if you go to, and I've got links for her here, um, I will have links to her podcast, which is um, at least every two weeks, and she puts out lots of tutorials. Lovely podcast. I've been watching from the beginning, and I've never missed an episode. And um, so she does tutorials there too, but then she also has, I think, a blog and um, her shop. So you can get to all of that as Craft House Magic. And um, she sells these. And if I were you, I would wait for them to come out and subscribe to her, her podcast because she announces when she's doing her shop updates and get a pair of these. This is, it keeps them protected in your bag. And um, just everything's kind of handy there. And um, I just love it. And then the piece de la resistance. She designed and made for me this project bag. It's a large one, has her free motion quilting on the back that says Craft House Magic. Butterflies appliqued on the front. This beautiful color, and I am, I, I love purple. And a DPN cozy to match. Um, She's got a little butterfly progress keeper here and this twill zipper pull, which is ingenious. I, I love that pull. And inside are, it's going to be hard to show you, but two pockets. So this is a nice size um, bag. And she included the most lovely card with a note inside. So I was absolutely thrilled with this swap, Ellie, and thank you so much. And I hope all of you will go and have a look at um, her podcast and some of the wonderful things that she sells in her, um, in her shop, Craft House Magic. So what else did I have to talk about today? Um, one thing in particular, I wanted to mention a podcast that um, I watch. Um, it's actually on, I, I, I listen to it sometimes as an audio podcast on iTunes. It's the Knitting McPurley podcast, but she's recently started doing a video part as well. And um, she's a knitwear designer, and um, I just really enjoy listening to her. She also does a lot of sewing. She lives here in Virginia. I don't know where, but um, she's a state state neighbor and um, I really enjoy her podcast so I thought um, I would mention her and some of you might enjoy um, checking her out on YouTube for the video or um, on iTunes and I think someplace else but 
I only get I only do that through iTunes, so I don't really know the other ways for uh, getting those podcasts. And of course, I've already mentioned Craft House Magic and Little Drops of Wonderful, both wonderful podcasts that um, I never miss ever ever. You know, there are those that you see say, "Oh, okay, good." You know, there's other podcasts, and then those it's like, "Okay, when can I when can I turn this on and not be interrupted?" Well, these are ones that I I do I uh, save that for as well as a few others. So I wanted to mention that um, in December, I am going to be doing Vlogmas. Now that's the like Vlogtober in October, only this is um, in December. I did it last year and um, I did it almost every day because I was uh, featuring children's literature. I'm going to be doing it this, this year differently. Um, I came up with this idea last year right as I was finishing uh, Vlogmas and decided I would do this this year, but I didn't really get um, involved with it until I finished Vlogtober. So I've been working a lot in November to um, be all ready for this and hopefully not be as stressed. I'm going to be doing 12 different um, Vlogmas episodes. I, I won't be doing it every day and I want to get it all done before December 15th. I'm not saying I'll get one every day through then. I'm giving myself a few days leeway and more if necessary. But um, I want to do it as starting December 1st because I am going to show a different children's literature book every day. They're not fiber related. Okay, they're holiday related. So um, a seasonal um, book. So um, I want those to be out there before too long in case you see something you're interested in trying to um, obtain in order to give it as a gift for the, uh, Christmas time. So that will be um, starting December 1st. They'll, they will be short, um, some very short. I am not going to be doing long tutorials as I did in uh, Vlogtober. Just um, it, 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 there, I have a theme, and um, I came up with that last year. So I've been working hard on something that I will explain in detail once the uh, vlog, Vlogmas begins. Um, if I just said Vlogtober instead of Vlogmas, I, I'm sorry. So um, lastly, um, uh, what I'm grateful for, and this has been my year of um, trying to think about things frequently that I am grateful for. And of course, I am grateful for all of you listeners who stuck by and waited for me um, despite my long absence here. Um, I am sorry it's taken me so long. It's just that, you know, if I don't have anything to show, it's, it's kind of hard and I don't want to just be knitting so that I have something to show. That doesn't seem like the purpose. I, you always want to have some some pleasure derived from this since it's our hobby. It's it, We're makers and um, you want that making to be something that you just feel like doing right then. And right now, um, I tend to have a little bit of an obsessive nature um, where I start doing something, I can get very uh, involved with it and exclude other things. I wouldn't say I'm obsessive compulsive. It doesn't have a, a serious detriment to my life. But there are times that I can become very uh, tunnel vision focused on something. And right now, I would say I'm slightly um, obsessed with getting something done, but also just in doing it because I'm having a lot of fun with it. And it is fiber related, um, and I'm going to talk about it in uh, the Vlogmas. So um, during Vlogtober, I had a lot of loyal watchers, and I so am grateful for all of you and all of your nice comments. And um, hopefully um, some of you might enjoy Vlogmas. It's not going to be a knitting podcast. Um, it's going to be uh, holiday driven. So if you're not interested in that, I certainly understand. Um, I don't watch things I'm not interested in and, and I wouldn't uh, tune into that. I hope to get a podcast out in December and then definitely at the beginning of January. So thank you so much for stopping by today. Um, we do have a, a Ravelry group um, over in Ravelry in a Pickle Knitting is our group where uh, there are threads for all of our different um, make-alongs and um, I'm also in a pickle knitting on Instagram where I'm not a very um, active person there occasionally post something I don't even check it every single day but I, I try to get in there um, every once in a while just I find those things um, that's what I years ago I, I stopped with Facebook I still have an account but I just don't go there because they're time suckers I just find I get um, in there and it just seems to never stop. Pinterest does the same thing to me, though I do use Pinterest a lot because that's where I get, you know, inspired. Um, 
in part uh, Pinterest, and, and my Vlogmas uh, thing is entirely Pinterest, was inspired by Pinterest um, initially. So anyway, so long-winded today. I apologize for being long-winded, and I thank you so much for taking your valuable time today to spend a little bit of it with me, and have a great day. Bye.